Welcome to the Boynton Beach Community Redevelopment Agency's meeting today, Tuesday, February 1st, 2022 at 4.34 p.m. Would everyone please rise for an invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father and Motherly Earth, we uh, thank you for allowing us to gather here today to do your will, uh, to do your will. And in the essence of the Lunar New Year for the, the water tiger, we appreciate the ability to overcome new, uh, new challenges and difficulties and bring about new change for the Boyden Beach. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a roll call, please? B. Grant, Chair. Hey, okay, Vice Chair. That's Board Member. Christina Romulus, Board Member. Present. Ty Pensurga, Board Member. Present. We have a quorum. Any additional solutions or corrections to the agenda? No, sir. All right. May I have a motion to approve? No move. Second. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Legal. Uh, Catherine Rossmill here from Lewis Longman and Walker. Nothing from legal tonight. Okay. Disclosures, conflicts, contacts, and relationships for items presented in the CRA board on agenda. Uh, as for me, I have had past conversations with Centennial Management and looking to have a meeting with affiliated development this Friday. Vice Chair. As for me, there are no disclosures at this time. Commissioner Romulus. I did. Uh, board member Romulus, my apologies. Thank you. I did have a conversation with um, Jeff of Affiliated Development. Board member Pinserga. Uh, no new disclosures, but I'll just repeat previous ones. I've had conversations with uh, Centennial as well as Affiliated. Okay. Moving on to public comments. Uh, Yuri, can you open it up the? I have uh, made questions and hand, raising hands available. All right, thank you. And I do see that we have uh, some of our uh, applicants uh, here virtually. And so I'll ask everyone to, to please raise their hand or ask a question. If not, I'm going to close public comments. Do not see anyone with their hand raised or in the audience wishing to speak. So we'll move forward to old business. First item is discussion and consideration of a lease extension request for Gino Francois and Rosina Joseph for the CRO, CRA owned property located at 133 Northeast 4th Avenue. Yes, good evening, board chair and board members. Twee shut for the record. This is uh, the property that they're there are existing tenants. It's the property owner. The CRA uh, has been asked to have a lease extension for Mr. Jean Francois and Rosanna Joseph to stay um, on the premise for an additional um, three more months until May 18th, 2022, because they have recently purchased a property, but there's been tenants that under a lease on their new property to move. This is a property the CRA purchased as part of the cottage district assemblage. The board had given the property owners, uh, the previous property owner 30 days so that staff can take a look at the demolition cost to make sure that um, it is feasible cost wise to allow this um, for them to stay longer. So we have since then gotten re and received bids and evaluate the bid. And it will look like it is um, better for us to do the demolition of this property as well as the Macintosh property to the east separately. There'll be some cost savings in that. So we don't have to do the two properties together in the demolition activities that is um, funded by the Solid Waste Authority. So therefore, our staff recommendation is it's okay for the um, Mr. Francois and Ms. Joseph to stay there as requested until May 23rd is our date in which they need to vacate the premise 
without interfering with our timeline for the grant. So with that, um, the board has options to approve the lease extension, rent free, approve the lease extension, um, subject to a monthly rent as determined by the board or alternative action or not to approve it. We also have before you a list of um, comparable rent for you to consider. But that I'll be here for any questions. Uh, what is their current rent? It's free, rent free as part of the um, post occupation. All right, and I do see uh, Mr. Jonathan Jacobson here. Uh, and so I will try to unmute your microphone. Here we go. Good morning, uh, uh, Mr. Grant and the rest of the board. How are you today? We're doing well, thank doing you. Well, thank you. So um, first of all, I want to thank uh, the uh, members that have worked on this to get the uh, quotes and to recommend extension to May 23rd to the board. Thank you so much again. Truly appreciate your kindness and hard work in proposing this to the board. I spoke to my clients about rent. Um, you know, I just want to let you guys know that um, I've taken some deferral of my fees. They're still having some uh, issues with finances getting um, payment of their current mortgage and other expenses with four kids. Um, if, if the board finds is inclined to charge rent, we ask that uh, rent be uh, minimal. I don't know what you have for comparables in front of you. Um, you guys have been more than generous up to this point. You know, I, I'm not sure other than, you know, uh, revenue to, to the city. Um, I don't know how significant that would be to you, but it would be significant to my clients to have to pay any significant rent on the property for the next four months. Um, but we defer to your decision as to what you want to do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jacobson, Thank you. do you have any authority to to accept any sort of rent? Uh, I, have a certain, I have a certain limit. Sorry to interrupt, go ahead. And so that, that's the only question, you know, for me, um, you know, I think we were, were generous with the, the, the first contract to, to get the, the property, um, you know, you know, including the staff time associated with this. Uh, you know, I was thinking more, you know, $10 a day, about around $300 a month is what I feel is something that, you know, it kind of is some sort of incentive for them to move out a little bit sooner if they have that ability rather than just have it free rent. I feel that is uh, very generous. I think $300 a month is uh, more than fair. Um, and um, is it okay if it starts in March or does it start no, no, in February? I'm sorry, Mr. Jacobson, this, that was just my-, my um, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. So it's not a done deal just yet. And so I have uh, the vice chair that would like to speak. Sorry, guys. Okay, I'd uh, just like to ask, uh, did I hear that you, uh, well, the French are, they, Joseph has a, a tenants in there that they're charging 2,500 a month. Is that, did I hear that right? It, that is correct, sir. Oh, so sorry. 2,500 dollars a month, but we're not getting anything. It, so it's in another, it's a new property they're buying. Correct, Mr. Jacobson. There is. Yeah, there. sorry. Let me let me just clarify. I apologize. I didn't mean to keep interrupting, but just to clarify for the vice chairman, um, their new mortgage per month is thirty two hundred dollars. Uh, they started paying it. They received twenty five hundred dollars from the current tenants at the new residence where they'll be moving into after May twenty third. So they still have a deficiency of seven hundred that they pay out of pocket for the new mortgage because as you know, housing prices exploded and they looked for a, a house for quite a while until they closed in November. Um, so that's where we're at. They're not operating at any type of profit and not paying you uh, for the privilege to live in the property. Okay. Uh, well, you know, we've been very generous um, and I would go along with the chair and a, a minimum amount of $300 a month um that seems uh still low but fair and does the, does the board have any other comments i have no objection all right and so would uh, someone like to to make a motion 
I so move that we uh, assess uh, three hundred dollars per month for the property staff. I second that. I believe the attorney was asking for clarification. So, can the maker of the motion clarify which month that would start? Would it start in March? Uh, well, whenever, if it starts this month, it would start this month because the, the I believe the lease has already expired. Okay. Especially since it's February the first, be a good time to start. And so, and give them up until the the fifteenth. For this month to make payment and then i believe it's normal practice for five days okay thank you so much um so it would be uh, 300 a month this month uh february 15th i guess i will hear from uh personnel on where to make the payment where to remit it and then starting in march april may it will be 300 um due on or before the fifth of the month that is correct. Okay. I want to thank everybody uh, for, I know, uh, giving us the extension, the more than favorable rent, and for everybody's hard work. We really appreciate it. And um, just want you to know that from the top of our from the bottom of our hearts. Have a good new year. Thank you. May I be dismissed? Yes. Thank oh, you. no, no. Hold on. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. I was now, just about to remind you, Chair. Yeah, now it's uh, <laughs> the vote item has been uh, voted on. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Uh, the next item that we have on the agenda is approval of development agreement between the CRA and Centennial Management Corp. Wells Landing Apartments, LLC for the commercial component of the MLK Junior Boulevard Corridor Mixed-Use Housing Project. Yes, um, this item has been postponed. Uh, from the last board meeting, the three, the next three items will be in relation to the MLK Junior mixed use property, now known as the Boynton, Heart of Boynton Village Apartments. Uh, the attorneys have been working very hard, and I wanted to thank our attorney for coordinating and getting all the language so that it's agreeable to everyone. I will also turn it over to her rather than just taking so much time going back and forth. She can explain there should be three agreements before you. One is a clean copy, one is a red line copy for ease of review, and she will go over some of the um, negotiated items that's been finalized today. Good evening, board and board chair. Catherine Ross, Mel Lewis, Longman and Walker. Um, so we have been uh, involved in some vigorous negotiations with um, Centennial and with their lender. Um, I'm happy to tell you that the agreements before you at the dice have been agreed upon by all parties. There were really two outstanding issues for this agreement in front of you. Um, there'll be three agreements. They all kind of had similar issues, but the one before you, there was a question of um, how and when the development agreement could be assigned in the event that the lender took over the property. And so we've negotiated some language so that if the developer um, it has the property taken possession of or taken ownership of by the lender, then the lender will have the option to have this agreement assigned to them, at which point they would take on the responsibilities of the lender as well. Um, and they would just have to provide notice to the CRA that, that that's what they intend to do. Um, the other change that was made was a very minor change, which is instead of payment by check, it would be payment by electronic funds transfer. So it doesn't sound that extensive, but it was a result of many conversations. And so um, that's the if there is going to be a vote on this tonight, um, because it's different than what's in your agenda, I would just ask that the board allow me to propose a motion that someone could move so I could read into the record that language changes. I'll move. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. And if it's okay with the board chair, I'll just pick up the next item as well. So uh, you asked us to read into the record the items that you just read, correct? Yeah, so to make, to... Um, so this is a different development agreement or is this the same development agreement? This is a different development agreement. The one that you just voted on was for the commercial component and it will contain the changes that we just discussed. This next one here is for um, the residential portion of the same project for state funding reasons, they're divided into different agreements. Um, so did we approve the, the we just approved the changes, is that correct? Yes. Okay, um, my apologies, because one of the things I believe we asked of the 
the developer is for a, a fictitious business name of the Heart of Boynton Village Apartments. Uh -huh. it, and I don't believe that they've gone through that yet. I, I just kind of want to know if they're in that process. I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the developer. It is my belief that they are in that process. I'm not sure that it's been established yet. So this entity is the viable entity with which we can form a contract. Okay. Um, and so I'll ask the, the developer if they're able to speak. Uh, Elizabeth, I currently unmuted your microphone. I, I believe also Ms. Michelle Roke is here in, in person. Oh, Michelle. Um, and Sorry. we did forward the information to. Um, Sentence. Still try and um, unmute her before I begin. So if you have any troubles, then I'll try and communicate with her to answer any questions. So the just the the question in regards to the fictitious business name for Wells Landing LLC has that been forward? Is any progress happening? They're on they're working on it. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on to the second item of approval of second development agreement between the CRA and Centennial Management Corp. Wells Landing Apartments LLC doing business as the Heart of Boynton Village Apartments for the MLK Junior Boulevard Corridor Mixed Use Project. Thank you, Board Chair. Um, this development agreement is again for the same project. It's simply for the residential portion of that project. There were um, a few uh, amendments to this agreement as well. First was just to clarify that should the original purchase and development agreement be um, amended, that, that this um, development agreement still relies on. Uh, this this development agreement is on top of a previous purchase and development agreement that has been executed by this board. Um, and so because we wanted to, because this agreement, certain terms of it rely on the performance of the prior agreement, we just wanted to add some language that says if the prior agreement gets amended, then those changes will also be effective in this agreement. Um, so that changes in a whereas clause at the beginning. Um, again, there was the change that the payment would be made by electronic funds transfer into an account designated by the developer um, for any payments that are made out. And the same um, assignment language was also added to this agreement to provide that in the event that the construction lender or permanent lender um, takes possession of the property, becomes owner of the property, then they will have the option to um, receive assignment of this agreement, at which point they would take the burdens and benefits of this agreement. Um, finally, with regard to a discussion that was last time, there was a discussion of whether there needed to be joint and several liability of um, the officer signing on behalf of the business. We discussed um, a different solution, which is in this agreement before you, which is um, simply a guarantee of project compliance. In the past, this board has accepted construction and project completion guarantees in lieu of that type of joint and several liability. So we've added a paragraph that essentially accomplishes that saying that um, if there is a breach of the original purchase and development agreement, you know, on the substantive performance, not a technical default, but um, in terms of constructing the project, meeting the deadlines, using local contracts, those types of things, if there's a breach in the original agreement that will also be considered a breach of this agreement. So with those changes, um, this agreement has been, the language in here has been agreed to by all parties. Um, and if anyone would like to make a motion to approve it, as I've just described, then it would be. Good to go. Motion to approve. Second. And Elizabeth, uh, I believe your, your microphone's yes, unmuted. We yes, we can hear you now. Can you hear me? Fabulous. I'm, I'm still a little Zoom challenged. How can I help you? And so, um, you know, the, the, the comment that I had is that when we're, we're dealing with all these agreements and moving forward, especially with the, the name of the, the complex, that we have a legal entity uh, that has been approved by the, the CRA board of the, the Heart of Boynton Village Apartments. It would be a fictitious name um, doing business as the Heart of Boynton Apartments. Okay, and so I, I guess I'll ask uh, you to contact the, the executive director when that is uh, becomes official. Okay. okay. And so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. And the last 
item for MLK Junior Boulevard Corridor Mixed Use Project is approval of a tax increment revenue finance agreement between the CRA and Centennial Management Corp, Wells Landing Apartments LLC, doing business as the Heart of Boyden Village Apartments. Um, board Chair, you're going to get tired of me repeating myself, but I will run through this one again. Um, I would like to, there is one slight different term in this. Um, so for this tax increment revenue funding agreement, um, the developer agreed to a paragraph that's, that simply states that the developer will ensure that each residential unit contains a mach washing machine and a dryer. So I believe that was a request of the board at the last meeting. Yes. Um, so that has been inserted. Um, the form of payment was again transferred to be an electronic funds transfer instead of payment by check. And finally, the assignment language is previously discussed that in the event that the um, permanent lender or construction lender takes over the project or becomes the property owner, then they'll have the option to accept the assignment of this agreement and, and the burdens and benefits thereof upon notice to the CRA. So we would like to make a motion to um, accept this agreement with those changes. Again, this one will be done. We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Seeing no further discussion. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. And Elizabeth and Lewis, thank you for your hard work, and we look forward to uh, the groundbreaking ceremony uh, as soon as you let us know. Yes, Michelle. I have some updates from her. Okay. If you don't mind. So she said all the permits and construction uh, of the new community, the Heart of Boyan Apartments, um, uh, update on the permits. All permits have been approved and they have their first construction meeting at the job site on MLK Boulevard on Monday morning. Um, they plan on the groundbreaking ceremony sometime in February 2022. And on behalf of Elizabeth and the rest of Centennial Management, they would like to thank all of you. They wrote down everyone's name, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you. So, thank you, guys. And our last item on the agenda is update on negotiations with Affiliated Development LLC for the 115 North Federal Highway and Film Mix Use Redevelopment Project. Yes, Board Chair and Board Members. Since the last, um, the November 30th meeting where we selected the CRI selected affiliate group. We have had numerous meetings together with the city as well as the developer the development team and affiliated. In the staff report, it has all the late dates to to um, show progress. Also, we are working hard with our attorney and affiliated and their team to ensure that we get a terms and draft agreement to the board at the March 9th meeting. The city will also be working with affiliated as well on the two agreements for the parking garage and lease and or easement agreement for that. The cover, the staff cover also listed the terms that we are negotiating with each of those um, associated development agreements with the CRA. So we'll be looking at a purchase and development agreement terms um, for the CRA for the property as well as a, um, a TURFA agreement as well. You'll be seeing this back on March 9th at your meeting. I believe Mr. Burns is on virtual, participating at virtual, if there's any questions, and staff is here for any questions. Mr. Burns, you've been unmuted on our end. If you'd like to have any comments to the CRA board. Um, hello, this is uh, this is Jeff. Um, no, I think we pretty much covered it. We're you know, working fast and furious around the clock to try to get these agreements done. So I uh, made a lot of progress and, and uh, you know, hoping to have these things wrapped up in a couple of weeks. All right, excellent. And how is the, the garage looking uh, with the city? It's looking good. You know, we've, we've had some productive uh, conversations. Uh, I believe that city staff has, has been working with uh, some of their consultants, including bond council to um you know further further their uh kind of behind the scenes work um but uh but yeah everything's everything's going smoothly and and uh as, as tweet indicated in addition to the two cra agreements that we're looking to finalize we'll have two agreements directly with the city um for the garage okay excellent and then um i guess the the conversation for the 209 north federal highway 
project is that I know that's not going to be part of the the CR. It's going to be part of the CRA agreement, but as an ability to negotiate further if acquired. Is that correct? Correct. So so what we've done is you know we've obviously got a, a lot to to bite off here with these these four agreements with, with the city and the CRA, and so we've just allowed ourselves um, the flexibility to uh, you know amend. Uh, the documents in order to uh, you know appropriately inc include that pro uh, that property should we reach an agreement at a later date with the landowner. Excellent. Okay. Does anyone else from the board have any questions? Seeing none. All right. We'll look forward to coming back next month uh, to finalize the documents. And if there's nothing else, may I have a uh, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seeing no further comments, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously.